Welcome to the More Insights and Strategy video podcast. I'm Anshel Sog, Principal Analyst at More Insights and Strategy, and joining me this week is Andrew Davidson from Qualcomm. Hi, Andy. Thanks for joining us today. Glad to be here. Could you please let, our, let listeners know your background uh, when it comes to Wi-Fi and you know where, where you come from? Okay. I'm, uh, I've, well, I've been working in Wi-Fi for more than 20 years, in fact, from back when it was called 802.11. And uh, I've worked on pretty much every technology that's came along since then, all the way through to Wi-Fi 7. I've worked on standards, I've worked on development, worked on promotion of the technology. You might, you might tell from my accent, I originally come from Scotland. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I remember crossing paths with you uh, at one of the uh, Qualcomm Wi-Fi days, and I definitely got the sense that you, you you've had a lot of experience in Wi-Fi. But specifically referring to Qualcomm, I was wondering, you know, what's Qualcomm's role in Wi-Fi, and what's your pedig- specifically what's your pedigree in gaming when it comes to connectivity? Well, we're probably the last Wi-Fi company that supplies Wi-Fi to every one of the markets from IoT, automotive. Uh, into access points for home and enterprise, and of, of, of course, into phones and into PCs. And we drive leading edge solutions in pretty much all of those markets. But it's, it's often the case that it's uh, applications such as gaming that are really going to challenge the Wi Fi the most. And, and when it comes to uh, you know, platforms that, that gamers can use today, where can gamers find Qualcomm's Wi-Fi solutions and, and what can they expect in the future? So Asus Rogue is a great example of uh, a very high-end gaming phone. Uh, we're in many PCs, of course, you can look for the, the Fast Connect SKUs that are within those to get the, the Qualcomm products. Uh, all of those include a technology we call DBS, and we're going to continue to evolve that, that DBS technology. So what you'll see in the future is even more throughput, even better latency. And I actually have one of those gaming phones here, the Red Magic 7S That's Pro right. with the uh, Fast Connect 6900. And I, I haven't had a chance to really fully utilize its capabilities, but uh, it just came in like last week. And it's it's a very fast phone in almost every imaginable way. Yeah, they're incredible. And speaking of speed, uh, we know that download is usually a number that people like to brag about. But for gamers, what are you guys doing to enable latency? Yeah, and, and you know, speed does help latency because you know, think about it: the faster you move a block of data, the uh, lower your latency is. So, so that certainly helps. But specific to latency, there's a technology I mentioned called uh, DBS. Typically, your access point has support on more than one channel. It's 2.4 gigahertz, and then it's got one or two, five gigahertz, and newer products have six gigahertz. The technology we produced has two Wi-Fi radios in the client and can connect on the two, four, and one of the five or six gigahertz bands, and it sends the data on both of them. So if data gets stalled on one, it still makes it through on the other one. And that can really help latency, especially some of those very long latency events that that, that are uh, particularly bad for gaming. It it can eliminate the the longest of those by, by sending across both channels, even though most of the time, the five or six gigahertz is going to be the one that completes first. If you get a lot of congestion there, the 2.4 gigahertz will will make up for it. So that's been very well received. It's in a lot of the products. In fact, all the products I mentioned, it's uh, support built into Windows 11, and it's uh, supporting gaming platforms like Steam. And for that feature, that requires both the device and the access point to be Qualcomm-based? No, it will work with any AP that supports more than one channel. And it, I, I think pretty much all of them do these days that people are buying. Yeah, that's good to know. And you, I know that like this feature is something that has kind of um, been brought into Wi-Fi 7. So I was kind of curious about how Wi-Fi 7 will, will change gamers' experiences from previous iterations like Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 5. Yeah. So Wi-Fi 7 is known as 
EHT, that was its tagline at uh, when the standard was created. It stands for extremely high throughput. And I mentioned the high throughput, of course, helps latency. But you could almost call it extremely high throughput at low latency because that, that's kind of one of the features that, that it really focuses on. You get some of the standard ways to improve speed, just like put more data into a packet, the 20% more in 4K QAM. It's got wider channels, 320 megahertz channels, and multiple different ways to get to those 320 megahertz channels. So, so that helps Im improve the speed. But the one you're mentioning is something called multi-link. And uh, there's two different types. There's one that's called alternating multi-link, where instead of sending the, the packets on, uh, the same packets on both connections, it can send on one or the other, and it just chooses whichever one becomes available first. And then even better than that, there's a technology called simultaneous multi-link. And in simultaneous multi-link, you can send them both at the same time. So you get the aggregate performance across both bands, you get the congestion avoidance that we got with, uh, with DBS. And that, that's really an evolution of DBS that we're calling HBS. It's, it's high band simultaneous. Got it. And does the high band simultaneous require the use of six gigahertz or can it operate on the lower bands as well? It, it, it can be, uh, the high band simultaneous could be five plus five or it could be five plus six. So in countries that don't have the six gigahertz band, for example, you can, you can still use high band simultaneous and, and you can get better speed. And, you know, those higher frequencies um, also, you know, they seem to work really well for, for lots of applications, but uh, I was curious what Qualcomm specifically is doing to improve cloud gaming and wireless XR, which are both almost entirely used over Wi-Fi. Yeah. Those, those are great applications because they for this technology because they do require high throughput and, and low latency. So cloud gaming is, is really kind of limited right now by what how high a throughput can you deliver at the required latency. The latency is kind of fixed, right? You need a certain responsiveness. So you, how much throughput can you deliver really determines what is the, the visual quality of the game. So if you can deliver more throughput at a very low latency, the quality of the game can improve. For VR, uh, one of the most exciting things uh, about VR is the high band simultaneous, but not necessarily both connecting to the AP. One of the things that you want in a VR headset is you, you really want the longest battery life. You want the lightest headset that you can have uh, on your head. And so driving down the, the power there is kind of interesting. And one of the ways that we believe that's going to be done is the, the processing and the rendering of the VR will be done at a laptop or will be done at a phone and then delivered across to the headset. So there you need two high-speed connections. You, you need a connection to the access point because you're mm -hmm. probably doing a, a game that's on the network. And then you need a very high-speed, low-latency connection between the, the laptop or phone to the headset in, in order that there's no extra lag getting introduced into the game at that point. So with high band simultaneous, those are both links that you can do in five gigahertz or you can do in five plus six gigahertz. So you don't have any anything having to use that kind of legacy 2.4 gigahertz channel, which is really just for IoT uh, right now if you're using it for Wi-Fi, but mostly you're using it for Bluetooth. So if, if you're gaming or uh, you're listening to audio, uh, you're using controllers that are on Bluetooth, that 2.4 gigahertz gets freed up for those devices. Right, and 2.4 gigahertz has a lot of interference today, which obviously makes um, you know interference a problem, which then affects latency and, and causes you know dropped frames. So I guess one of the questions I had was also, what are you guys doing to, like what kind of techniques are you guys using to improve power and performance in gaming and VR to kind of mitigate some of the issues that exist? Yeah, the real secret to 
low power and Wi-Fi is you make it sleep as much as you can. It's actually, it, it maybe is a little counterintuitive. You want to move the data faster so you can sleep more. So you know, more speed actually helps power saving as well. And especially if you can schedule when you're going to be awake, because then the device just needs to wake up, quickly get all the data, go back to sleep again. So Wi-Fi 6 brought in some techniques that were improving scheduling. Those continue to get built upon with, with Wi-Fi 7. The other thing Wi-Fi 7 is bringing is better ways for the, the client device to communicate to the AP what its needs are, what traffic needs are, what its sleep schedule wants to be, et cetera. The, this all helps make this uh, technology lower power while still meeting uh, these requirements. And that translates both to VR and gaming, or are there, are there any other things that might, might fit into one of those other two categories? Well, it's really uh, perfect for for VR for the reasons I spelled out earlier. You want that lightweight headset. You want it to uh, be able to connect and uh, get the data across as quickly as possible. So that that really is one of the the prime examples for HBS. And you know, I would, I would look out for devices that are going to have that capability. So as, you, as you're moving forward into VR, and VR starts to expand, you, you can take full advantage of it. Yeah, and I know that we talked about Bluetooth a little bit earlier and that a lot of your, your Wi-Fi platforms have Bluetooth in, embedded in them. Are, are there any improvements that Qualcomm has made uh, to the gaming experience over Bluetooth for gamers? Yeah, absolutely. There's a technology you should look out for called Snapdragon Sound. It's, it, it's really an optimization of the whole audio path end to end, of, you know, all, all the way from the, the, the source uh, getting generated through the codecs across a Bluetooth link to the headset. We optimize that entire audio path. And one of the goals is you're going to get to ultra low latency by having what we call synchronized audio. And it, what that really means is that there's very little lag between something appearing on the screen and you hearing the response. You pull the trigger, you get the gunshot, and you hear it in a time frame in which you would expect to hear it. We're, we're down to 89 milliseconds of, of latency. We're continuing to drive that. The other aspect is, is about the to improve an immersive experience is quality of the audio. So Snapdragon Sound is the premier quality audio experience. Yeah, and I, I know that the uh, the Red Magic has it, and I'm excited to actually game on yeah. this thing with some Snapdragon Sound uh, earbuds that I've got. Um, I guess, you know, what should, what should people look out for to be able to use the Snapdragon Sound experience? They need a a Qualcomm Snapdragon based device and and a uh, Snapdragon sound compatible headset, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Look for, look, look for that Snapdragon sound on the products, see that it's included, make sure the, the products have app text built in. Great. And I know that you personally, Andy, have uh, authored a lot of patents around wireless docking. Do you see foresee there being a future where gamers could wirelessly connect? all of their different gaming peripherals seamlessly without any wires and very low latency? Yeah, I, I, HBS enables that now, that, that high band simultaneous. It means you can have, uh, you can have a high speed connection to the access point. At the same time, you can have a high speed connection to your display in order to, to show the game. And then all of your, uh, audio controllers, or, or sorry, your gaming controllers and your audio can all be done over Bluetooth. And because the, the link to the display and the link to the access point are both in five and six gigahertz, it just frees up that whole 2.4 gigahertz band that Bluetooth is using to be all available for control and for audio. So a much enhanced glitch-free experience. Right, and that, that kind of in my head also feels very similar to like a VR experience where you have the headset connected to those higher bands and then your controllers connected via the lower bands and then your audio because a lot of headsets don't have built-in audio, right? So, you know, I think that translates pretty well to the VR experience as well. Yeah. Um, I guess if there's anything else 
Uh, are there any other things you'd like our audience to know about Qualcomm's connectivity products that could further improve a gamer's experience? I think we covered it. I mean, I think the, the keys are look out for Snapdragon sound in the, the audio products that, that you're getting. Uh, if you're buying products today, make sure they support the, the DBS, the, the dual Wi-Fi capability, uh, so you get advantage of that. And then watch out for the upcoming HVS products as, as high band simultaneous starts to become available in, in gaming products uh, towards the end of the year into next year. Great. I was just going to ask what when we can expect those products. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I knew you would ask. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I Andy, I really appreciate you joining us today. Um, thanks a lot for joining the podcast. It was a pleasure. Thank you.